just push for your wart there. We just slightly backed out. Just digging your toes into the turf at the moment. Just taking the attentions of three or four of the stall's handlers going into stall 10 for James MacDonald, seeking his fifth win at Royal Ascot. Remember, he had a couple of winners here at the Raw meeting 12 months ago. That's it. Now they're all set in the gate. And they're off in the Kensington Palace Phillies handicap. A lot slow to begin was Bell Haven, also from a very wide draw, far too shy, was just a little slow into stride. And it's Tarab who tries to hold the rail position, taken on by Roman, missed out a little bit wider. Tamarama, Frank Dettori has also gone forward, and so too on the heels of the leaders is Zenga. Now beginning to make ground from midfield is Divine Light. Danny Musket didn't really get a great kick, but he sent that one forward now and will have the lead with five and a half furlongs to go. So it is Divine Light who has now gone on to Roman Mist against inside rail in second. Tamarama on that one's outside in third. Crystal Caprice and Zenga are next, followed by Tarab, who's up against the inside rail. Traffic problems on the rail at the back for Golden Spice, who appear to almost clip eels. At the moment, Mukadamar is towards the rear of the field. Slime Adam is last as they race now on towards the turn, which will bring them back towards home. Divine Light has got the lead. Tamarama is racing in second and travelling well. To the inside, Roman Mist in third. Crystal Caprice is in fourth. Zenga is in fifth. Then towards the inside, the yellow of Tarab. Then swinging wide is Indian Wish, who's creeping into contention. Don't tell Claire and Bell Haven. At the moment, you weren't there. Has got a lot to do and held in a pocket as they bunch up now with a quarter of a mile to go. Divine Light taken on by Tamarama and Frankie Dottori. And a cheer from the crowd, but there are a host of challenges. Don't tell Claire down the wide outside. Roman Mist is rallying. Tarab towards the inner on the wide outside. It's far too shy. Villanova Queen is staying on. Another hundred yards to go. Villanova Queen on the near side. Now just a nose in front over Don't Tell Claire. And it's Colin Keane who runs its first winner at Royal Ascot. Villanova Queen wins for Ireland. Tie for the Miners. Involved there were Tarab, Don't Tell Claire, Adelaide staying on. And you weren't there. It was never there until the finish. At 25 to 1. A hugely significant win here for the jockey in the saddle. Colin Keane, a jockey who's been so successful but has had to wait a long, long time for this particular win. His first at Royal Ascot, don't tell Claire in second, Tarab in third, Adelaide's just got four, followed by you weren't there, and then far too shy, Zenga and Roman Mist. So it is Villanova Queen who has won for Ireland and she has taken the third running of the Kensington Palace. One for Ireland, this, in the colours of William Craiger. Villanova Queen, Colin Keane, we're going to hear from shortly. Big moment for him, and what a popular win. And we heard from her yesterday, trainer Jesse Harrington. Yeah, well, there was, listen, there was a lot of hard luck stories here, right? From the turn in, there was a big bunch of them. The handicapper would be pretty happy. He's, got a, he's done the job very well. Colin Keane swoops down the outside. Superstar in Ireland, Colin. He had to wait a long time, you know, to, to get his first ride. I didn't think he'd take this long, but he's still young. He's still improving all the time, but... He's like he's 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 the he's the champion jockey in Ireland, but this will feel special. Riding your first, you know, your first Royal Ascot winner is very very special. Had to be super super patient, didn't he? And come down the wing of the field. Yeah, but when she is there, red hat on the outside. What with two fellows ago, she must have been practically lost. Right? Yeah, but you, I, I suppose he's looked down in there and he thought, yeah, I, I need my miner's lamp if I'm going to go that way. I'll go left hand <laughs> down. And there were quite a few that didn't have the miner's lamp on on the inside. Who was really unlucky? So many hard luck stories lots of them chopping and changing you have to watch that three or four times and oh just looking at the cheek pieces there one on the bridle on the inside with the red with the white cap i think ruby is going to have his work cut out here. yeah yeah on the favorite james mcdonald everything went wrong for the start for him but for colin Keane, matt he's had to wait but now he's on the board at royal ascot yeah, well, the Keane's big hit, of course, is nothing in my way. There's nothing in the way of Colin Keane at Ascot anymore. Well done, Col. Thanks, man. Uh, no, it's, I don't know why you're coming, but it's uh, unfortunate for Shane Foley. He's obviously out his, his collarbone. I'm very grateful to Miss Harrington and her team for giving me the opportunity. Tell me, first of all, what it feels like to win at the Royal Meeting in front of a crowd like this with so much, so much at stake. How does it feel? Yes, I suppose it's just a weight off your shoulder. Uh, it's the biggest stage in race, and you're coming here year in, year out, trying to, trying to get one, uh, so it's very satisfying. How did the race go for you? Very straightforward. Uh, Miss Harrington said they sent us right wherever she relaxes. Uh, there was a lot of pace on early doors, uh, and I kind of just let her find her feet. Got very 
congested at the bottom of the straight and we, one thing she said to us, try and keep her smooth, challenge wide and have one sweep and run and it's good when it works. And I bet when you get that exhilaration now, you, you just can't wait for the next one. Exactly. Colin Keane, he's a champion in Ireland. It was always going to happen. Today, it has. The winner led in by Neve Deering on the right there. You have to feel though for Shane Foley, who what, he broke his collarbone, didn't he, at Goran the other day, misses a ride like this. He did a lot of good, you know, Jesse Hyde had a good team coming over here, so you would feel sorry for him. Um, but listen, he's hoping to get back for the Irish Derby, you know, so got a bad fall in Gore and it was an awkward looking one and you know, um, but he'll be back, you know, he'll be back. He's young, these guys are young and that's what, you know, comes and goes, you know, like, but the miss a meeting like this is, 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 is disappointing. But Colin, as I said, he's a top class rider. Um, I'm delighted for him, I'm delighted for him, and I'm delighted for Jessica Harrington too. And this Philly was in that bracket of won a handicap, tried in more competitive company, struggling a little bit, come back to handicap grade, and she was a big strong girl in the paddock. The thing that put me off her slightly was she was dancing around a lot, she was quite jig joggy, interesting to hear Colin Keane there saying, oh, Jessie said just put her wherever she'll settle, which she did obviously towards the back of the field. Yeah, and um, as you, look, I'll rubber stamp that. Dusty, I hope you're okay at home and we, we wish you a speedy recovery. Um, she got one piece of format, three quarters of a length behind who? Homeless songs. A while ago, mine, but if you go back anywhere there, she was uh, she was still well treated. Well, she got that clear run down the outside where everything was shuffling into the right. A lot of horses got interfered with. A lot of horses got tight. She got that clear run down the outside, and that's the that's the difference of winning and losing these big, these, especially these handicaps on the round course.